Yes. Hallelujah. Um, let's uh, open uh, with a word of prayer this morning. If you all would stand here, and we want to welcome those um, who are viewing from home and uh, to join in. Father, we give you praise this morning. Lord God, you are the God Almighty. You are sovereign over all, O Lord, no matter how things look and how our days have gone, O Lord. Lord, you are with us. Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory this morning. We ask that Jesus would be lifted high. Lord, we are going to lift up the name of Jesus here in this place, Lord, and in our hearts. Father, and we give you uh, praise for all the works you have done, O oh Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Worthy is your name. Father, I ask that, that uh, you would direct your love to, uh, upon us this morning, Lord, as we worship you this morning, Lord. Let our praises rise up, O oh God. And we give you thanks, O oh Lord, for your goodness and for your mercies, O oh Lord, that are new each morning. Lord, we ask that you would bless the service this morning, Lord God. In our time that we gather, Lord, may the fellowship of the saints, Lord, be glorious to you, O Lord, as we lift up your name, O God. O Lord, we celebrate, we celebrate, O Lord, the cross. We celebrate Jesus in the resurrection, Father, because he has brought us life. He has brought us life from death, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray that there be any that are listening in this morning, Lord, that have not heard that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is the life of all men and the light of all men. Lord, I pray that you would open their eyes and open their hearts that they would see. For you are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy of praise. And we give you thanks this morning here in this place, Lord, and everywhere we go in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen, amen. You may be seated. Miss Gail's going to come with the announcements now. Morning. Happy Thanksgiving week. Wasn't it just summer? I don't know. I think it was just summer. Uh, we're so glad you could join us this morning. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone who, uh, who uh, participated in the Operation Christmas Child. Uh, these boxes go to children that maybe otherwise may not have had anything for Christmas. Plus, the shipping costs that you uh, also donated go towards allowing Samaritan's Purse to share the gospel with the children. So thank you so much for your generosity. It was, it's a wonderful thing to do for these children. Uh, there will be evening prayer this evening. That starts at 6.30. It's a time to just praise the Lord, stay, stay in his presence, praise the Lord, and give him thanksgiving, especially this week. Uh, thanksgiving for all of our blessings, that's great and small. So if you'd like to pray with your church family, please come out tonight at 6.30. There will not be Bible study or children's classes or youth classes on uh, Wednesday. Uh, we're sure that you're all preparing for Thanksgiving, so you could take that time with your family and just prepare uh, for the holiday the next day. They will resume next week. Um, we are partnering with Fairfield Neighbors Helping Neighbors for Christmas. We are trying to provide a family of five with Christmas gifts for their children. There are three children. So we are collecting donations, and then we will be buying gifts for the kids, and they will be picking them up the middle of December. So we're asking if you would like to participate in this, you could please donate, uh, you could put your offering in the offering plate, make sure to mark it Christmas gifts. That way we know what it's for. Uh, and, and that way we will bless that family in the community, be a, a light of Christ to, to them in the community. If you have any uh, prayer requests or praise reports, please fill out the cards on the back of the chairs and put it in the box at the back of the church and we'll make sure that it gets on our weekly email. Uh, if you would like to find out more about Liberty Worship Center, you could visit our uh, Facebook page, Liberty Worship Center Fairfield, PA, or our website, lwcff.org. Now, the children's message with Ms. Tracy Paul. Good morning, everybody. So we're going to continue with our name series today, and... Um, I turned it off. Okay, so how many of you like to go hiking? Anybody like to hike? Yep. How many of you have been out hiking and you get over that hill and you look around and you're like, I have no idea where I'm at? Have you ever done that? Yeah? So what do you do when you realize you're out and you're suddenly lost? You're like, this doesn't look like the way I'm supposed to be going. So you can do a couple of things. If you're a seasoned hiker, or 
Boy Scout or a Girl Scout, you probably have a compass, okay? And you probably know how to read a compass. When I was a kid, I thought whenever you were walking forward, you were always going north. If I wanted to go east, I went to the right. If I wanted to go west, I went to the left. And if I wanted to go south, I turned around and went the other way. Made sense to me. But anyway, we all know that's not the way to read a compass, right? You can also have a map. A map will tell you, not necessarily where you are because you're lost, but it will tell you, okay, which direction do I got to go to get here, all right? So, or you can just plug in the GPS and ask Lola or whoever it is to get you to where you need to go, okay? So, now, back in the Old Testament days, God used prophets to go and give direction to his people. When God wanted them to change their ways or go in a different direction, he would send prophets to tell them what he wanted them to do, where he wanted them to go, okay? So in our lesson today, as the disciples are gathered around the table with Jesus, he says to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through me. So up until now, all of our I am statements that we've been learning about have always been spoken in a public um, area where people could hear. But this time, um, we're, it's a little bit different because it was meant for just the disciples only. So that's why Jesus was talking to them around the table. It was just him and the disciples when he made the statement. You see, Jesus knew that his time on earth was coming to an end. And soon he would give up his life to save all mankind. The disciples weren't quite on that page yet. They didn't quite understand all of that. So the I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So what can we learn from this I am statement? Okay. So first of all, Jesus is everything that we need. He is the way. He's the only way to God. Jesus is the only truth. You know, we've talked about there's so much information out in our world today. We're being bombarded with, with thoughts and ideas and ways, and we're told that, hey, this is good. It's, you're okay. But if it doesn't line up with God's word, it is not the truth. So we need to realize that. Um, Jesus also gives us eternal life, and that's something that we can be grateful for as well. Once we know that we've accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, uh, we know that we have eternal life through him and only him. So um, in class time today, we um, are going to do a little treasure hunt and um, learn a little bit more about what God's word has to say about this I am statement today. So I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor Jeff. Thank you, Tracy. I definitely understand the if I want to go east, I go right mentality uh, sometimes. But uh, yeah. And by the way, who the heck is Lola? Lola? Uh, we appreciate the, the children's message, Tracy. Um, good morning, everybody, and good morning to you who are watching at home. Uh, before we get started anymore, I just want to take a moment, a little pastoral encouragement here. I don't know how about you guys, um, but right now, things are kind of like a hot mess. And a lot of stuff going on in the world, and a lot of stuff going on in individual lives, and a lot of stuff going on here with the church. And uh, we can become frustrated, we can become frightened, we become disappointed, whatever. But the reality is that none of this is a surprise to God. If you remember when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples, the storm comes up and they're all freaking out and they're mad because he's sleeping. They wake him up and this is what he said to him: You little faith. But wait a minute, it's a storm. It's a real storm. But here's the reality. He said, Boy, boys, I said let's go to the other side. We're going to the other side. Storm, no storm, it don't matter. We need to remind ourselves sometimes that all this stuff that's going on, none of it is a surprise to God. And if he has said you're more than an overcomer, if he said you're going to the other side, 
you're going to the other side. It might be with gale winds and, and wet hair and soggy shorts, but we're getting there. So, again, uh, you want to share a couple positive things here. We did, I had shared the other week about opportunities for serving in our body. Uh, we now have someone who stepped up to be the assistant to the treasurer, to help with the new software, and selling new software and uh, handling the finances. Uh, I'll share this with you because you at home and, and you here need to, need to know this. We are totally transparent with the funds here. Everything that comes in, every week we have two people who set that are not, you know, two different uh, team members set, check incoming, count it, fill out a slip so that we know what was received. Every dime and nickel is presented to you guys every month in an, in an accounting spreadsheet so report. So we are transparent with that. So we have somebody who stepped up to be part of, of, uh, of that process. So we were grateful for that. We now have somebody who has stepped up to be the liaison between ourselves and Fairfield Neighbors Helping Neighbors. It's a community uh, action group that meets the needs of, 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 of families in the community. The great thing is that they have connections in the Fairfield Area School District, which allows them to be a little bit more aware of things than even we are. So I'm glad to say that. We have one more uh, ministry position um, that we're looking for. If your calling is to work with folks, we get a lot of folks who contact us looking for some kind of assistance for different things. Um, if, you're, if you're a person who doesn't mind entertaining those type of questions, uh, vetting out the things and needs, um, maybe that's where your calling's at. So I ask you to consider that um, as well. I do want to share this as far as uh, also ministry opportunities, the worship team. Um, uh, Carrie's not here this morning. Uh, you'll hear about this later, but um, your sweet little Sadie, uh, their new dog, uh, decided that the place to be was in between Carrie's feet, and she took a spill and seems to have hurt or broken her right uh, wrist forearm type thing. So she's home nursing that. Uh, X-rays tomorrow. Um, but again, if you have any musical talent and skills, uh, let's contact Carrie and, and uh, see if there's an opportunity for you to use those to glorify God. Same thing with you guys at home. You want to find a place to use your musical talents? Come, let us uh, see if, you, if you're a good fit for the group. But um, we're looking forward to what the God's going to do in those areas. We're going to continue our worship with the giving of our gifts now. Um, as I say every week, find some place that's doing good work for the kingdom of God and give unto the Lord. You cannot outgive God. He blesses us abundantly. We give back a portion of those blessings. So we're going to ask you to stand up, drop off your offering. Worship team, let's go ahead and take our positions. stand with us.
very careful. Come in here, please, and say that you inhabit those spaces. Thank you. I thank you that wherever we are, you are. Thank you. I thank you especially for the anointing that comes when we sing your praises. Thank you. <coughs> at your feet to hear from you to fellowship with other believers in our adoration and Lord we just pray that uh, our 
hearts and minds would be open here fully to receive, um, to hear from you, to be changed and transformed by you. Lord, we ask that you would just, as Lori said, inhabit our praises. As your word says, inhabit our praises. Come fill this place. Move in power amongst us. And Lord, those at home, Lord, just overwhelm them with your presence. And we just bless you and we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I feel the same way. Yeah. I need a nap for sure. Good morning again. I'm not sure if this is a tighten your seatbelt Sunday morning or not, but we will trust and see what the Lord does. Amen. Well, as... He also appropriately said, it's Thanksgiving week already? Wow. Um, I'm prepared. I uh, called the neighbor up yesterday, and he came over, and we put the hard top on the Corvette, so I'm ready for the winter. It don't matter. <laughs> but it's going to be Thanksgiving week, and that means a lot of different things for different folks. For some of you, that means on the road again. Uh, maybe to multiple places to overindulge in food um, and, if we're honest, spend some time with people that we might not otherwise do. Hey, that's what Thanksgiving is about, right? Just get together and have mashed potato fights and things like that. So, But I thought we would do this. We do this pretty much every year. I'll just give you a chance to say, hey, what is it that you're thankful for? So take a moment. And if the first 300 doesn't come to your mind right away. But let's just go ahead and we'll start on this side. Raise your hand. Tell me something that you're thankful for. Your relationship with the Lord. Anyone else over here before I move to this side of the table? Come on, boys and girls. Let's. Your family? Family. Family. Family in relationship with the Lord. This group? Your wife. That's it. You... you Oh, isn't that sweet? You, you can actually go to sleep tonight and have to worry, not have to worry. Your grandkids. You know, I have told people that if children, if I would have known how much fun grandkids would have had, I'd have had more kids. So I could have got more. Did I see another hand? Greg? Your wife for putting up with you and children. Seems to be a theme. The people in the church. Amen. Good people. Tina. Amen. Amen. See, that's the key to being thankful. Being thankful doesn't ignore the things that can challenge you feeling thankful. It, it recognizes, acknowledges them, and says, hey, did anybody else over this side? Girls. Yeah. COVID stuff is just crazy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mary. Amen. 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 Earl.
Amen. I, I'll share this in Earl. I hope you don't mind. Earl and I talked um, this week off and on and then again this morning. If you ever want to see a glimpse of how amazing and finitely detailed our God is, two plus years ago, Earl's on his way to someplace else. And the Lord says to him, stop in here. He pulls in a parking lot, never having been here. And from that day on, the Lord has changed him, transformed him. For what? I said it last week about getting thrown in the deep end. When you're there ministering to a family who's about to lose a loved one, and it's your loved one, there may be no harder detail that God ever gives to us. But there is also no greater privilege than to be there. And God equipped him for two and a half years to be there, to minister to his brother, Hope, who we baptized here a few weeks ago, who, to his, uh, his brother's fiance, to his brother's son. You see, that's how our lives are supposed to be. We're a rock thrown into a pond. It just ripples out and ripples out and ripples out. Amen. Anything else we're thankful for? In the back, Jason. A one from Facebook. Patty, Patty Freeland. Thankful for God's love. Amen, 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 amen. Well, one of the things that I am greatly thankful for and probably supremely thankful for is the presence of God. Now, the presence of God doesn't just show up without salvation. Don't get me wrong. If it does, it shows up in a very scary way. If you don't know Jesus and the presence of God shows up, it is a frightening thing. But when you know Jesus, it is the most intimate, passionate, peaceful, joyful place there is. So I am blessed and I love the presence of God. So this morning, as part of our Thanksgiving, we're going to take a look at one of the shortest psalms that David ever wrote, but probably one of the most familiar uh, and one of the most meaningful. So we're going to take a look at Psalm 100 this morning, um, and I hope and pray that uh, the Lord does something for you in the midst of this. David writes this. There's no indication about when in David's life that this was written. It could have been as a shepherd boy out watching sheep. He was famous for writing songs. Psalms, S-P-S-L-A-M, is the word for song. It, it's meant to be uh, read or, or sang to music. So David writes this. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Five verses. Five verses. David writes these words. It is both a description of our life in the Lord and the prescription for how to receive and walk in the presence of our God. He starts off like this, shout for joy to the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but all of my life since when you came to church and mom made sure that we got up early every Sunday morning, and uh, went to Sunday school, and then met her for church. Uh, but I can remember from this size, when you walked into church, it was, shh, quiet. Every Sunday morning, my mother would sit between my brother and I. If we nodded off, or if we got a bit antsy, or said anything, my mother had the sharpest elbows ever made. <coughs> Put you in your place quick. But we've always been taught this, quiet. And there is a reverent side. It's deep. Listen, the Word of God says, be still and know. We saw that this morning in our prayer time. And by the way, if you're not part of prayer time, you need to be part of prayer time. 
It is a good time in the Lord. You want to hear from the, the Lord? Go and sit at his feet. Listen. He doesn't want to shout at you as you're driving to your next appointment or checking your next Facebook posting or app. He wants to speak to you. There's a still, still small voice. The Word of God says, be still before the Lord. So there is this reverent side of our relationship and our expression. But there's also the other side of it. David says, shout to the Lord. We see that numerous times in Scripture. We're to shout a cry of victory. This word in Hebrew is the word um, ruah, not urah, as some of you might think. It's ruah. Now, for those of us who've been part of this church for a while, you might remember a gentleman named John Rua. Big John. We were building the church um, 11 years ago, and we had got the exterior pretty much done, and we were working on the interior. But we came to the great realization we wanted to finish the, the front in, in brick and masonry. We didn't have the money. We didn't want to borrow any more money. What are we going to do? So we finally settled in our minds, we'll just put T111. For those of you who do construction work, it's a very cheap. Uh, we use it a lot for uh, sheds, if you've ever seen sheds in the people's, back of people's yards. You've got a, a board and a, a slot and another board. That's T111. So that's what we're going to do in the front of the, front of the church. We were all kind of a little disappointed, but hey, we've got to be good stewards, right? Well, one day we're here working, and this beat-up, nasty old S10 pickup truck came pulling into the parking lot. The door swung open, and this mountain of a man stepped out. Now, you could tell just to look at him, he was a worker. He was a laborer. He looked like a man who'd worked hard. He come walking over in a dirty T-shirt and blue jeans and construction boots, and he says, who's the pastor here? Bob was still here then. Bob says, I'll I am. He said, God has sent me here. And perfect Bob Costello response was, squinty eyes, lips don't barely move. Really? God sent me here. He said, I'm a bricklayer by trade. I can lay 1,200 bricks a day. If you'll buy the bricks, I'll do your church for nothing. See, John Rule lived his name. He was a shout. Everywhere he went, he was a shout unto the Lord. Now, he didn't always raise his voice, but he was powerful expression of God's grace and thanksgiving for the Lord. He just shouted his joy. See, this word is really cool. It says shout for joy. Now, that's a two-swinging door. You can shout from a place of joy. Like sometimes, you guys, maybe you're, I know some of you are Steeler fans. We'll pray for you after the service is over. But you're football fans. And, you, and if your team scores a touchdown, you go berserk. <laughs> You're shouting from a place of joy. You can shout for what God has done. All the things that we listed that we're thankful for are reasons to shout unto God. And it's okay to shout unto God. But that door swings the other way too. There's a song, maybe if you were ever in Sunday school 100 years ago like I was, you would have sang the song, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And then the second verse was, if you who want joy, you must shout for it. You see, there are times from a place of desperation, from a place of hurt, from a place of wound, from a place of fear, we need to shout out to God. Because he has said, hey boys, we're going to the other side. I don't care what the life's thrown at you. I don't care what the storm looks like. We're going to the other side. And in the face of that storm, we stand up and we shout, we are going over. So you can shout 
from a place of joy. But you can also shout for the need of joy. Both of these places are to the Lord. You see, sometimes we do from our flesh. We get angry. I mean, look around at our country. It's my right. You can't tell me. We're like we're, we're, like we're screaming at the moon. Take all those needs, all those hurts, and take them to the Lord. And all of a sudden, the things that are driving you crazy, the things that have got a spirit of, forgive me, the spirit of rebellion upon you, will start fading away. Will start fading away. So we can shout from a place of joy, or we can shout for joy. It says, worship the Lord with gladness. So let me be honest with you. You don't need to raise your hands. How many of you were really glad to come to church this morning? Because, <laughs> you know, the reality is some of us are going, man, I just, can I just stay in bed this morning? I got so much stuff going on. I don't have anything to wear. I've decided I should just have, I went to a seminar one time, a business seminar one time, where the guy goes, was how to be efficient. This guy was a piece of work. He said, I went to the uh, J.C. Penney's, and I bought five blue shirts, five blue pair of pants, light, uh, five light blue shirts, five dark blue pair of pants, uh, and, and uh, f- uh, five identical ties. I don't have to choose what I'm wearing every morning. It's all the same. I'm thinking, you have lost your mind. Half the fun is going there. See, I'm the other direction. When I worked, when I worked, I had to wear the suits every day. It was Black Monday, because that's what Mondays were like. You had to go back to work, right? Black Monday, Blue Tuesday, Green Thursday, Gray Fridays, and Brown on Fridays. See, I had everything laid out. We sometimes don't feel gladness when it comes to worshiping. And sometimes we don't understand what worship is. See, we think that if we come here and we sing a couple songs and throw a couple dollars in the plate and listen to me drone on for 30 minutes, that that somehow is, is worship. Well, this word, if you have your other translation, you read your own Bible, some of the translation says, serve the Lord. You see, this worship is an action word. But it's only action from where it flows, from the heart. Listen, I do things, you do things. The motivations of why we do things can be very different. We can come to church because, hey, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to go to church because Billy Bob's there and I like Billy Bob. And then when Billy Bob's not there, you're going, this isn't the same, he's not here. Now, we come from the place of gratefulness. God so loved is tied directly to love the Lord your God with all your heart. It's this river, if you would, this spiritual river. God pours his love into us. We pour it out of ourselves to others and to him. Do I read my Bible? Yes. Are there days where it's something chore? Yeah, there are times when I, yeah, especially in the begats. Listen, if you have more than eight consonants in your name, I don't want to read that stuff. It's way too many. The begats can drive you crazy. But I do it because I love him, and he loves me. And I know that if I'll sit at his feet and read, there are times when he'll go, look at this, look at this. Wow. You see, it's the motivation. It's not the activity. It's from where in the heart it flows. Worship is this expression of love to our God. And when it's that, you can do it with gladness. 
You can do it with gladness. It says, come before him with joyful songs. Ever been to places where you think, good heavens, it's, this is a funeral. L listen to that music. This is like death marches. Music is this amazing spiritual thing. It communicates emotions. It touches deep within our, our spirits and souls. And there are times when it's appropriate to sing a song. I mean, uh, we have it. Uh, how can we sing songs of joy when we're in, when we're in captivity in Babylon? Earl was sharing that in the midst of his dealing with his brother in his closing moments, the Lord gave him an old uh, bluegrass song, old country uh, gospel song, that talked about someone being led by the warden to his, to his death and being ready to go home, having been repentant. So there are times for that. But even songs of sorrow can be sung from a joyful place. I miss my dad. I miss my mom. I miss my sister terribly. But I also know that as much as I could love on them, it's nothing like Jesus is loving on them now. So in the midst of this time of sorrow, there can be this gladness. There can be, they will never, this life will never be anything compared to what their life is now. Come before him with gladness. Joyful songs. Some of you go, I can't sing. <laughs> Does that stop me every week? We're called to make a joyful noise. We're called to make a joyful noise. And we do it with gladness of heart. For the, have you ever had children? Uh, all of our three of our children sing well. Our two girls are really well. They didn't always sing well. And when they were first born, singing is a learned skill. I mean, you have to have certain talent, don't get me wrong, but you learn. You learn to, to hear notes, to carry notes. When they were little, oh, I can remember when they first got their band instruments. You know, we invested in a lot of, of uh, hearing protection when, when they first got there. Ding, 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 ding. But you, you're joyful that your kid's doing something that will allow them to express emotions. So we make a joyful noise. And then it says in verse 3, know that the Lord is God. This is really important. This is really important. A lot of us believe that there is a God. But we don't realize that he is God. By definition, God is supreme. We have a hard time letting go of that title. Many of you will have recognized uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman. And he wrote a song called, He is God and I am not. Yeah. You ever wonder why science is so adamantly opposed to any theory that would have God in the equation. You know, intelligent design has been around for a long time. It just says, hey, we see things that happened in, in nature, in science, in history, and we can get so far, but then there's this gap between what happened and how it happened. For example, um, when we go back to the beginning and origins of, of the Earth as it is today, science can say, hey, we know that looking from what exists now, that there are basic amino acids that have to form to, and, and link up to be able to form even the most elementary uh, life uh, um, aspects of life. They look at that thing and say, hey, we know, we know that this is, these things come together and this is how it happens. But then they're faced with the reality that statistically the, the chance of these randomly assembling in the proper order in, in enough to make something that is actually alive is impossible. It's statistically impossible. So they're, they're left with this chasm between, hey, we can see from what we exist that this is what helped create life. We just don't know how it got to the point where it became life. Intelligent design goes, hey, listen, it's simple. You look at a watch, 
you can say somebody made that because it's complex. There's lots of parts. It didn't, didn't, uh, listen, if you cut down a tree and let it sit there for a bazillion years, it will never become a dresser. It won't. It won't become your dining room table. Why? Because everything decays. That's a fact. So when science is confronted with this, and we say intelligent design, they go, no, 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 no. Why do you think that is? Because it will make them surrender their godhood. Education is not God. Information and knowledge is not God. It's important. It's good stuff. It's needed. But there's only one God. And we need to come to a place in our lives when we stop arguing about all the other stuff and recognize, listen, he's God. He's God. I don't always get everything. But I'm smart enough to know that if he did all this detail work in the past, he's probably working something out right now that I just don't recognize. We need to realize that he is God. It's he who made us, and we're his people. Ooh. That's another thing we don't like sometimes. Ever, ever run into a, anyone who thinks that they're self-made? <laughs> I did this, and I did this, and I did this. Yeah, well, who gave you the breath to do all that stuff? Who gave you the body to do all that stuff? But you didn't do anything to get that. See, when you realize that at its base level, God's the author. And if he designed it, he probably figures out how it works a lot better than we do. But here we go. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Here's the key. Here's the prescription for the presence of God. When we approach him, when we want him to be where we are, to sense him, to feel him. Oscar was talking, we were talking this morning early, about feeling the manifest presence of God here. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. We don't always feel thankful. You see, all the stuff that we listed that we're thankful for, there's another list. I'm not thankful for COVID. I'm not thankful that the economy, the gas is now up over almost $4 a gallon. I'm not thankful that as I've matured, notice I didn't say get old, as I've matured, I can't do some things I used to do. There's lots of things that you can not feel thankful for. So what do you do with those things? Scripture tells us to set your eyes upon Jesus. Do you know that Helen Keller said this? Again, for those of you who don't know Helen Keller, she's blind. She was blind all her life. She said this. I am so acutely aware of all that I have, I don't have time to consider what I don't have. Wow. When your lack is the focus of your life, all you see is the lack. All you see is the the hole, the void. I don't like COVID. But I thank God that I haven't had it. And as messed up, and don't get mad at me and send me hate mail, as messed up as this whole vaccine stuff is, and it is messed up, I'm grateful that they got a vaccine. Because there's another couple million people that maybe didn't die, that would have died, that has a chance to hear about Jesus before they, when they die, they don't have any way to get back. So I can look at COVID, and I, there are things that even in the midst of it, I can be thankful for. You see, thanksgiving is not ignoring the reality of what is. It's being grateful for what you do have. I can't do the things I used to, but thank you, Jesus, that I got to do them for as long as I did. And I still have stuff that I can do. 
You see, I'm one of those people, I don't want to rot away until the day when things go well. I want to go out sliding, crashing, burning, and screaming the whole stinking way. I want to go out dragging people along with me every day till I'm done. So I can be thankful. I can be thankful that even in my midst of uh, getting older, there are still things that I can do and enjoy and, and focus on. No, I'll never be in the NBA. <laughs> uh, I'd rather be in God's army. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and heart. Are you thankful? Is that who you are? Listen, you, I'm going to do, do you a favor here. Don't answer yourself if you're thankful. Don't ask yourself. Ask those around you if you're thankful. Somebody you can trust and somebody who will tell you the truth. You need to hear it. You need to hear it. Because sometimes we really don't get a good read on ourselves. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. When I come before the Lord, I love to go, God, I am so grateful. Lord, I look at this. I look at, I've been married. I am 67. I know that shocks most of you. You thought I was still in my 40s. And we got married when we were 20. Now, some of you are going, holy mackerel! I know, I, I have sneakers older than some of you are. <laughs> Is our relationship like it was when we were in our 20s? No. In some ways, it's, it, it's very different. But in some ways, it's actually better. You know, I don't know, if I'm going to say this really frankly. The, co- the thought of dating again, should something happen? No, 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 no. Been there, done that? No, no, no. That's way too scary. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. There are things we can be thankful for. Things we can, I love to go before him and, and be grateful for the things that I have. Now listen, I have the wine sessions with God, just like everybody does. <laughs> and he loves me. He listens. Okay, okay, okay. Are we done? Are we done? Are you going to just continue to talk about your problems? Or how about talking about me delivering you from your problems? You see, we enter his courts with with thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. It says, give thanks to him and praise his name. The Lord is good. It's hard to sense the goodness of God sometimes when things are not well. But God is always good. God is always good. We might not always understand it right then and see it, but God is always good. He always does what's best, not what's convenient. The Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faith will continue to all generations. So I just got a few questions and and tie this bow up. Aren't you glad I didn't preach on about 30 verses? (laughs) Are you joyful? Again, don't ask yourself. Ask somebody who you trust and know. Are you joyful? If you desire the presence of God, we're either coming from a place of joy, and we're shouting, or we're crying out for joy. We are called to be joyful people. There was a book, I, don't, I think, I don't know if it was Zig Ziglar wrote it or somebody years ago, The World's Most Happiest People. If, if the church was really like that, we would have to set up more chairs and build more buildings. Or start having them in the church like we're supposed to at our homes. We're to be joyful. Are you joyful? Are you serving gladly? You see, that comes from the Lord too. When we're thankful, when we're grateful, we will be glad. As hard as it was, I guarantee you, Earl would not trade a moment of that time with his brother. We serve gladly. You know, I tell you, I get tired like everybody else does. But there is joy in serving the Lord. It's 
for me, it is the single greatest source of joy in my life. Now, I know that's hard for some of you to understand. You mean you, you, you get more joy than your grandchildren? Yeah. Listen, I love my grandkids. They're great. But I've got, I got some shocking news for some of you. That adorable little thing that you love so much is going to grow up one day. And they're going to have their own life. And they won't be there for you to hug and hold and all the other stuff all the time. And you want it that way. Your kids and your grandchildren are to be launched out into the adult world, not kept in the nest to never grow up. You want it that way. For me, the greatest joy I have is serving the Lord. Do you know that he's God and as he's made you? There are times I need to remind myself, get off the throne. There's only room for one, and it ain't me. He is God. You live as his child. Can you give thanks in all things? That's a command. If we want the presence of God, I read this a few weeks ago um, in one of the Given 15 um, devotions. God doesn't fill a dirty vessel. If I want the presence of God, if I want the fullness of God to be in my life, I need to get the dredges. I need to clean it out. I need to get all the whining and all the other stuff out. I need to come with a grateful heart. It's like, it's like the bonami. You young people are going, the what? This cleaning stuff. We need to be thankful. I'm going to be b- brutal here a moment. Listen to what you talk about. If you talk about what you don't have, all the different hurts, all the different disappointments, all the limitations, all the hurts and the pains, if that is the, co- is the predominant topic in your life, repent. Turn around. Change your mind. Start focusing on the things that you have to be grateful for and let the other stuff God. If you want his presence, if you want his, and in his presence is comfort and joy and peace. If you want his presence, you need to address an ungrateful or unthankful heart. Can you give thanks in all things? Do you praise, complain, or remain silent? These are your three options. We can praise him, we can complain, or we can remain silent. There's only one correct answer. Now, we drift in and out, but the reality is we need, praise needs to be part of our life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you've done. And know he's always good. I know things can be hard right now. And know that God is always good, always good, always good. I'm going to do something here uh, to close up. Guys, you want to go ahead and uh, drop the lights a second. A little different ending to today. Those of you who've been around a while will recognize this. Uh, we used to call them cor- choruses. There we go. Technology can be cool. It goes like this. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice for he has made me glad sing that with me I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart I will enter his courts with praise and I will say this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice for he has made me glad oh he has made me glad yes he has made me glad I will 
rejoice, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. We can choose to, choose to have a joyful song in our hearts. We can choose that this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't care what the storm does. I don't care what's going on. I believe him when he said we're going to the other side. I can sing and be grateful for the things that I know he's given to me and not be moved by what's going on in this world. Sing with me. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. And I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. He has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice. For he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice. For he has made me glad. Make a little bit more personal and say, You have, Lord, to sing to the Lord. You have made me glad. Yes, you have made me glad. I will rejoice, for you have made me glad. You have made me glad. You have made me glad. I will rejoice, for you have made me glad. Father God, in the midst of all those life that throws at us, you are a shelter for the storm. We come to you, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come to you with praise on our lips. Father, inhabit our praises. Fill us with your presence that we might rejoice in all things. Father, as we enter this Thanksgiving week, I pray that each and every one of us would take inventory. Take a moment and be able to identify the things that we are deeply grateful and thankful for that come from your hand. And Lord, that we would be wise enough and faithful enough to look at the things that we might take delight in that did not come from you. Lord, their world is full of temporary pleasures that deceive and destroy our relationship with you, the presence that we so greatly desire. Lord, as we go into this Thanksgiving week, I pray that as we have times of fellowship with family and friends and maybe even coworkers, I pray that, Father, your grace would abound in us, that the love you poured in our hearts would be shown to them each and every one of them, deservingly or not, Lord, that we would love. We don't deserve to be loved, but you love us. Help us to be as faithful with the love you poured into our hearts, to giving it without measure. I pray, Father, that we can find that deep abiding sense of joy that only comes from you. Thank you, Father, for your spirit and for your truth and your word. I pray, Father God, that... Uh, we would remember and that we would, in faith, be able to say, Lord, I, I know that the storm is raging. But Lord, you said that we're going over. And we, by faith, will declare that. And we, by faith, will shout that, Lord. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I'll leave you with this. Be very thankful, incredibly grateful, for we are unbelievably blessed. Amen? Now, we're going to remember, we are going to shout it. We're going to shout it 
that God is good all the time. Amen. Would you stand? I'm going to bless you and send you out of here. I'm going to also have a time of prayer afterwards here. Um, I know some of you would like to have a, a few moments to say things to me. Hang around. I'm not going to go anywhere. But prayer is important, and we're going to have prayer tonight, and I encourage you to, to attend. All the stuff that's going on in our lives right now, all the afflictions to carry to the, the house, all the other folks to, to our individual families, there are things we need to be praying about. We need to do that. So let's just, Father God, I thank you for these folks. I thank you for the faithful folks who are watching at home. And Lord, I just pray um, your outpouring of your presence into their lives, Lord, that they would sense and feel your intimate presence every step of the day. Lord, we breathe in your presence. Lord, when you created Adam, you breathed into him. Lord, I thank you, Father God. When Jesus spoke to the disciples, he breathed into them. Lord, is it, this is the theme you've been saying. You breathe into us your presence. We breathe out your praises. Father God, we bless you. Thank you. Send these folks forth with joy in their hearts to be world changers in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you. Have a great Thanksgiving.